Thank you so much for the opportunity to come present to you. My name is Sarbajit Banerjee. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Chemistry at Texas A&M University. Uh, I'm going to be talking to about, today about powering the green transition, reducing carbon emissions with vanadium. I'm really sorry I can't be with you in person. I promise that next year I'll try my utmost to be there in person with you, and I'm really looking forward to meet all of you. We are passionate about vanadium. Uh, vanadium ha is going to be a key green metal. It's a green, it's a metal that is implicated in the energy transition uh, across the world. On the one hand, uh, it is a leading material for rebar, and it helps reduce uh, the carbon footprint of the built environment. On the other hand, vanadium flow batteries are going to be a key part of the energy transition. As the world transitions to solar and wind, we're going to see more and more reliance on long duration energy storage technologies such as vanadium flow batteries. So it's really critical to try to start getting a, an assessment of the carbon and energy footprint of vanadium. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. slide has a lot of information. Uh, what we're trying to represent here uh, at the bottom is the timeline of uh, the development of vanadium flow batteries uh, since the pioneering invention of this concept by Professor Maria uh, Scalas Catacos uh, at the University of New South Wales, and then going through to the first commercial systems uh, pioneered by Sumitomo Electric, and then uh, large uh, uh, efforts that have taken place across um, the globe, uh, including some uh, incredibly uh, powerful efforts from Dalian, uh, Ronke Power, and uh, some really large systems that are coming online. And on the top is something that can, uh, has to be considered in parallel, uh, considerations of the supply and consumption of vanadium. Uh, so th this is a theme that I think uh, we have to keep in mind as we consider the use of vanadium flow batteries. On the one hand, uh, we've got the flow batteries becoming uh, better and uh, being able to uh, scale in size. Uh, but on the other hand, we're also dealing with uh, dips and uh, um, uh, falls in terms of vanadium supply globally. So as we start to look at projections for uh, energy storage, particularly for vanadium flow batteries. We've got some really good projections out there by Guidehouse Insights, by other groups. Um, and we are starting to see the metric tons of vanadium that will be required. Uh, and uh, on the right-hand side uh, of my presentation, uh, I'm going to put a pointer on here. These are different scenarios corresponding to 25%, uh, 50%, 75%, 100% of uh, planned vanadium flow batteries by 2030. And one of the things that stands out is that we're starting to run into some real shortfalls of vanadium, right? So uh, this means that, again, the supply chain considerations are going to be paramount. Uh, this is a plot that we've superimposed showing also vanadium pricing. You'll recognize some of these spikes as coinciding with uh, the introduction of Chinese rebar standards. Um, and uh, so as you see these spikes uh, in pricing, as you see uh, uh, these uh, gaps start to form in terms of projected production and consumption, we're going to have to have some solutions in the short term uh, and then in the longer term, which will inevitably require uh, building out new secondary sources uh, and then ultimately new primary mines for vanadium production. And of course, another key part of this is going to be recycling of vanadium in every um, part of its use. So uh, the primary objective of my talk will be to go through uh, very quickly uh, some of the work we've done in the past on quantifying carbon and energy impact for, of vanadium in, in the construction industry, and then uh, jump uh, relatively quickly to focusing more on vanadium flow batteries. Um, Okay, uh, here's some uh, of our past papers that I'm going to point to, uh, just in case you would like to do some reading, uh, and uh, please do go ahead and take a look. Uh, these these um, have some interesting numbers that might be of interest. 
One of the biggest impacts of vanadium comes from its use as a building material, particularly in steel sections and rebar. Uh, carbon footprint and embodied energy of the construction industry has, is extensively tied up with the actual materials that are used for construction. So in past work, my research group and I have come up with a life cycle assessment framework that looks at the properties of individual rebar steel sections, comes up with a um, structural model for buildings, looks at how much material is saved by using vanadium uh, micro alloy HSLA steel, and then uh, using this sort of inventory and accounting for the uh, costs, uh, carbon and energy costs of vanadium, uh, uh, we can uh, come up with an impact assessment for entire buildings. Uh, some of these uh, results demonstrate that up to 61% uh, carbon savings in steels uh, by using 500 megapascal steel, which is uh, HSLA as compared to 250 megapascal uh, steel and uh, savings in, in structural steel. The fact that we have to use less steel translates to very substantial savings in carbon emissions. Uh, the avoided um, uh, carbon emissions from using uh, vanadium micro alloy rebar in reinforced concrete structures can be very substantial. As you can see in China, we estimate that uh, there's we've had over 1% uh, reduction of carbon footprint from uh, what would have originally have been by using vanadium rebar. Uh, in the EU, it's 0.19% and overall uh, uh, 136 megatons of CO2, so 0.38% of uh, avoided emissions as a result of vanadium rebar. This plot also shows the embodied energy in addition to the embodied carbon, and so computing uh, embodied energy costs allows for determination of how much energy we save, embodied energy we save by using uh, vanadium rebar. In summary, carbon savings from uh, uh, using vanadium re uh, reinforcement bars are quite extensive and equivalent to 30,000 uh, wind turbines running for a year or 300 million barrels of oil consumed or 30 million passenger cars driven for an entire year. So these, these are really large numbers if you consider uh, the impact uh, on uh, uh, reduced um, emissions re and reducing the carbon footprint of the construction industry worldwide. Let's turn our attention now to the evolving landscape of uh, energy storage. And as we increasingly rely on wind and solar intermittent sources of energy, there's a huge demand for energy storage. Um, in uh, terms of short, uh, in terms of uh, short duration energy storage, we see lithium ion batteries. It's pretty clear that vanadium uh, oxide based cathodes and anodes will have some role to play in uh, relatively large format lithium ion batteries. But where it gets also really interesting for the industry is uh, inner day and multi, multi day long duration energy storage, where vanadium flow, flow batteries are one of the leading technologies. So, one of the things we've uh, set out to address is uh, how does having a vanadium flow battery compare to not having a battery at all when you uh, link it up with some sort of a clean energy source such as wind and solar? So how much does a, a long duration energy storage solution help you avoid curtailment of renewable energy? And then the second question we've sought to answer is what is the comparison uh, between a lithium ion battery and a vanadium flow battery? So here are some numbers on carbon intensity of electricity generation, uh, where we have compared different scenarios. Uh, looking at uh, on the far right side, we've got uh, some sort of typical grid sources such as coal. On, on the far left side, we've got wind and solar. Uh, and as you can see here, the vanadium redox flow batteries uh, for uh, more cleaner energy sources uh, do incredibly well as compared to lithium um, ion batteries. Uh, and this, this advantage starts to get lost at higher uh, uh, carbon intensities when coupling to more conventional sources. But when uh, hooked up with clean energy, uh, there's some real advantages to vanadium flow batteries.
So there's some assumptions that have gone into our calculation. Uh, our calculations are not perfect. We have to start with certain uh, assumptions. We assume uh, a 20 year uh, lifetime. We're looking at a LFP type cathode. So this is a conservative assessment for uh, lithium ion batteries, uh, lithium cobalt oxide, or some of these other kinds of cathode materials will probably have a higher carbon cost. We consider a one megawatt power rating with a, uh, a nominal energy capacity of 8.3 megawatt hours. Uh, and uh, uh, we're assuming, uh, which is I think not a bad uh, assumption at this point, that uh, VFBs have 75% efficiency, uh, uh, lithium ion batteries have 90%, right? So this is, this is uh, one of the places where VFBs are lacking and uh, this starts to take a toll when considering larger carbon intensities. Uh, we're also considering war uh, vanadium uh, extraction costs uh, based on existing data, but this is a dynamically changing landscape. Um, and then we also consider that, at least for the vanadium flow batteries, that we have at least one recycling uh, cycle. So here's some bottom line numbers. I'm not going to go through every detail, but it, uh, vanadium flow batteries generate at least 30% less CO2 than the lithium ion battery for every one megawatt hour of capacity. If you do consider recycling, then uh, the vanadium flow battery generates about 78% uh, less uh, carbon for as compared to lithium ion battery for every one megawatt hour of power stored. So uh, this comes from the recyclability of vanadium flow batteries being much better than that of the the nominal energy density, uh, as well as the charge discharge efficiency for vanadium flow batteries are somewhat lower. Uh, so this is uh, what holds some of these numbers back. Uh, but when you couple to uh, energy sources such as wind and solar, we see that the recyclability and the fact that you have uh, uh, the materials costs and uh, uh, incurred are much lower for VFBs, allows VFBs to come uh, out ahead. Um, uh, now, this does tell us uh, exactly how to start further improving the carbon footprint of VFBs. So considering somewhat older numbers, 2019 operational capacity of VFBs, every uh, possible VFB was being projected to save about 2.13 uh, million metric tons of CO2 over the 20 year lifetime. And uh, when coupled to wind and solar, carbon footprint of a VFB was much smaller than a typical lithium ion battery. Uh, and this at the bottom, I'm not gonna go through all of the details, sort of tells you where the carbon footprint is coming from, how much of it is from production, replacement, use, and end of life recycling, right? So as you can see, uh, the scenario with wind is particularly favorable uh, because uh, uh, the um, use phase carbon intensity is quite low. Some other findings here, uh, comparing some numbers in, under different scenarios for curtailment, where uh, you have either uh, no energy so storage solution uh, or com the comparative situation as compared to lithium ion batteries. So the energy by power ratio plays a significant role as well as electrolyte recycling, the particular use uh, profile and round trip efficiency. So these are some of the most sensitive variables uh, that the ultimate numbers depend on. Uh, so looking to the future, right, what can we do to further reduce the carbon footprint of um, uh, vanadium flow batteries? So one of the things that you end up seeing is that reducing the vanadium cost during manufacturing can have uh, at least some significant role. Um, and and the, the, uh, one of the ways this can be done is through more sustainable approaches to vanadium extraction and transportation. This is an active area of research amongst both primary and secondary producers of vanadium. Uh, a second big objective is to uh, increase the efficiency of vanadium flow batteries. Again, we've uh, seen uh, some beautiful work out of uh, multiple groups in at Dalian and Ronki and many other groups uh, where they are working on improving the efficiency of stacks. Um, and if this starts to get to much higher numbers, we're going to see again, uh, um, pretty large um, reduction in carbon footprint, right? So, and if we, if we can uh, do both of these situations, this is the, uh, this is the um, line here, the carbon footprint of energy storage um, can be quite substantially reduced. Um, looking to the future, these are some guidehouse insights of uh, 
how uh, vanadium flow battery installations are expected to increase across the world, uh, led um, very significantly by uh, Asia, and some of these numbers are starting to come true. And as you can see here, these are some. This is how much avoided curtailment and comparative uh, uh, benefits we're going to get if we start to hit these numbers uh, in the future. So we think that overall the outlook for vanadium flow batteries is exceedingly positive. Uh, there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of, uh, of work going on in improving the design of stacks, in, in uh, coming up with better electrolytes, improving electrolyte conductivity. All of these, as they start to put these push these efficiency numbers, will further uh, drastically reduce the carbon footprint, uh, especially for the operational phase of the batteries. Um, in the manufacturing phase, uh, there's efforts ongoing to reduce carbon costs of vanadium extraction, both from primary producers as well as secondary produces. There's all kinds of innovative uh, electrometallurgical techniques being pioneered. Uh, there's methods to uh, hook up to hydroelectric power. So there's, again, a lot of exciting things uh, which will decrease the carbon intensity of vanadium production. So one of the things that we want to go back and uh, revisit is the idea of where all of the vanadium will come from to uh, power this energy transition, to power this massive increase in uh, the installation and size of uh, vanadium flow batteries. And uh, there is a lot of concern about this in the community that this is also starting to hold back investment. And one of the th things that we've started to do with, in collaboration with Vanitech is to build these uh, living vanadium databases. This is a dynamically evolving landscape, and we felt that there's a need for real-time information, which is often not uh, available at one source. So we've got a production database, we've got a vanadium flow battery database, and we've got a processing database, uh, specifically uh, emphasizing uh, electrolyte processing. Uh, so if you have any information, this is a global map of a lot of VFB installations or deposits, really the world of vanadium, which is interconnected. Uh, and I think uh, we need to have, keep uh, real time track of what goes on in this world. Uh, and this is something we're trying to do with uh, Vanek. So if there's any information that is missing from these maps, please reach out and let us know. Uh, Benjamin Rogers uh, at tamu.edu is a good email. We're also working on an interactive carbon calculator, which will be uh, a do-it-yourself spreadsheet calculator uh, where you can plug in numbers and uh, make your own calculations about carbon costs for VFB installations based on your source of vanadium, the grid mix, the operational use scenario, the transportation, and uh, it's going to give you uh, the emission outputs. Um, and uh, if there is anything that you see that we don't currently have, uh, please, again, do reach, us, uh, reach out to us and let us know if there's something you'd like to see added to the interactive carbon calculator. You know that the source of vanadium matters and as you start to have really large installations, uh, the vanadium primary or secondary cost will, uh, will determine the overall uh, carbon uh, numbers for batteries. So this is, again, something we're going to start putting together. Uh, so again, our goal here has been to come up with a clear accounting of vanadium carbon and energy costs for primary versus secondary and, and to benchmark this. And to, again, if you've got any uh, suggestions, we're happy to uh, take any uh, suggestions that you might have, so please do email us. Uh, and in conclusion, uh, VFBs are critical to avoiding curtailment of solar and wind, and uh, they're a huge part of uh, amplifying uh, renewable energy, reducing emissions reductions, and uh, car carbon. vanadium flow batteries have a 17 kilogram CO2 per megawatt hour lower carbon footprint compared to lithium ion batteries. And uh, this rises uh, almost doubles when accounting for the extensive recyclability of vanadium. Um, carbon savings, uh, uh, the outlook is exceedingly positive. Uh, we're seeing large improvements in round trip efficiency, reduced carbon costs of vanadium production, and then uh, recycling, you know, not just two times, but three times and more. And we've got this world of vanadium living 
database that we're excited about that hope we hope you will uh, contribute to and give us your own contributions. And our carbon calculator is in the works for entire workflow from vanadium extraction to battery use case. Uh, so this is the team. Thank you so much. And again, I hope that next time I'm going to be able to see you in person.